connection and realignment information session geared specifically for um, a, a key stakeholder group in the Iowa workforce system, and those are the chief elected officials. Um, thanks for taking time out of your busy day to join us. And we know you have many obligations, and we promise to make good use of your time today. Next slide. My name is Lori Collins, and I'm going to be one of your presenters today. You will hear from a total of three of us. Two of us are with Mayor and Mayor, um, a firm brought in by the Iowa Workforce Development Agency to assist with the workforce system transformation efforts by providing some technical assistance. At Mayor and Mayor, we choose to uh, describe ourselves as uh, talent development and change management consultants. And we serve at the nexus of workforce development, economic development, and education. So joining uh, me today is Lynn Bajorek and Stacey O'Keefe. And Lynn is my colleague from Mayor and Mayor. So I'm gonna let Lynn say hello and tell, tell you a little bit about her background and then we'll turn it over to Stacy to do the same. So Lynn. All right, thanks Lori and hello everyone. Great to be with you today. Um, I've been with Mayor and Mayor now about seven years working on a variety of change management and workforce development technical assistance projects. Um, we work around the country with states and local areas um, around effective implementation of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, as well as doing strategic planning, visioning, um, change management, those types of projects. Uh, prior to that, um, I worked for the Michigan Works Association, which is an association of local boards uh, in the state of Michigan. I was a liaison between the state and the local system. And before that, I was with the U.S. Department of Labor um, as a federal project officer. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Stacy. Thanks, Lynn. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Stacy O'Keefe. I work with um, the U.S. Department of Labor's Employment and Training Administration in uh, Region 5, Chicago. And I've been with the Employment and Training Administration uh, for for a, a long time, like I'm, I'm almost to 30 years now. So um, right now I um, currently am the supervisor over the unit within our office that um, handles WIOA and Wagner Pizer funded programs. Um, my team oversees uh, WIOA implementation in the 10 states that make up Region five. Awesome. Well, thank you, Stacy, and thanks, thank you, Lynn. Um, again, my name is Lori Collins. Um, I'm with Mayor and Mayor. Um, I have about 25 years experience in the public workforce system, having served as a local workforce director of a 17 county area in Kentucky. And then I've also served as a state administrator um, in Kentucky as well with um, the uh, Kentucky equivalent of IWD, um, the Iowa Workforce Development Agency. So we're, we're happy to be with you all today and we're just going to jump right into to the webinar. So next slide, please. So this webinar platform, hopefully some of you all have a little bit of experience with it or, or one similar. The webinar platform has a chat box in the lower right hand corner. Um, please use this feature to one, introduce yourselves to us today, but then also raise questions throughout the webinar. Um, everyone is on mute today with the exception of the presenters. And this webinar is being recorded and will be made available by IWD to you and anyone else who is unable to attend today's session. Throughout the webinar, feel free to send in questions via the chat box and we will have time at the end today where we will um, try to answer your questions. So if you would go ahead using uh, the chat feature and just to help you get familiar with it, go into the chat box and tell us who you are and the name of the county that you represent um, so that we get a feel for who's, who has joined us today. And as you're doing that, um, we are going to go ahead um, 
Governor Reynolds um, recently um, developed a, a video welcome that uh, we shared with the State Workforce Board and uh, just to help set the tone for a webinar that we did for them yesterday. We thought that her words were um, extremely relevant and we wanted to share that message from the State Workforce Board with you all today. So as you all are typing in uh, into the chat box, we're going to go ahead and play that. Thank you for serving on the State Workforce Development Board. Whether you're a chief elected official or a board member, you're a critical voice in how Iowa's workforce system operates and supports local communities. As the entity charged with setting the vision for the workforce system in Iowa, this board convenes state, regional, and local partners to ensure Iowa is in compliance with the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which allows funding to continue flowing to serve Iowans. This webinar and the face-to-face -face training to follow will provide information essential to understanding your considerable roles and responsibilities under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. The webinar also features information about the system transformation and local workforce development area realignment process, timeline for implementation, and upcoming training to support the role of the State Workforce Development Board. So thank you for being a part of our efforts to upskill reskill and grow our workforce. Together, we're investing in Iowans and their future. So thanks to Governor Reynolds and um, the team at IWD and Governor Reynolds staff for um, pulling that together for us. Uh, we appreciate her comments and for um, the way that she's leading Iowa on this important transformative journey. Next slide. So today, um, the objectives of today, uh, things we want to accomplish by the end of this webinar. One is to explore the purpose of WIOA or the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and the workforce system, gain an understanding of the system transformation effort that is currently underway in Iowa. We're gonna delve into the role of the chief elected official um, as it pertains to WIOA. And then we want to identify the next steps for for you all as those elected officials in the system transformation. Our agenda for today, um, just keeping in line with those objectives. One, we are going to walk through the Iowa workforce system transformation effort, let you know what is um, going to happen and talk a little bit about the things that have happened. Um, two, we're going to uh, talk about your roles and responsibilities. We're going to share some next steps um, for you all. And then, of course, we will take questions and answers. So again, um, use that chat box to send us questions. And we'll pause throughout the webinar to, um, to address those as well as at the end. So with that, um, let's go on to the next slide, please. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lynn and she's going to walk you through the workforce system transformation um, and realignment efforts to date. Okay, thank you, Lori. Um, before we jump into the content, I do want to pause uh, just for a minute here on this slide um, so we can review some commonly used terms or acronyms um, that you're going to see in here as we discuss the Iowa workforce system transformation. And, um, you know, this is a common complaint <laughs> when working with government systems is that we tend to overuse acronyms. And I know it can be exceedingly frustrating for folks that are not knee deep in this stuff every day. So so we want to spend a little bit of time just explaining some of the key acronyms and we'll do our best to, to not overuse them. Um, but you've already heard us probably use the term WIOA. Uh, you heard Governor Reynolds use it. That stands for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which is the key piece of legislation that governs the system. And we'll dig into that further, as Lori said in the webinar. Chief elected official or CEO refers to all of you. Um, chief lead elected official is another important term that's used under WIOA. Uh, there, I did it again, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Um, and that is, those folks are commonly referred to as CLEOs or CLEOs. Um, the SWDB is the State Workforce Development Board, or we often just call it the State Board. The LWDB, Local Workforce Development Board, or just Local Board. Um, LWDA 
that's the local workforce development area or local area um, that the local board oversees. And finally, IWD, which is Iowa Workforce Development, um, the state agency department that is charged with overseeing implementation of WIOA. Okay. Well, let's move forward now that we've <laughs> covered um, some of the acronyms. Um, as a locally elected official, um, we know that, that your priorities lie in taking care of your citizens, right? And you're trying to do that by building a thriving community. Um, what we want you to understand is that built into WIOA is a, a vision for change that can help uh, drive what your priorities are. So your objectives may include safe communities with low crime, plentiful business development, and lots of job opportunities, uh, increased tax revenue, that's always a good thing, uh, low unemployment rates, and healthy and vibrant constituents in your communities. So you work on a regular basis, and we know we work very hard to create an environment with plenty of high quality jobs, and also the people or the talent with the right skills to fill those jobs. So all this contributes to increased tax revenue and wealth, which results in more opportunities for your community to grow uh, and enhance services for the residents. So as an elected official, uh, we know, and you know better than anyone, that you're a critical voice in how the system operates and supports your community. As the system is built upon the concept of local control, considerable authority rests with you as a chief elected official in that local workforce development area. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those areas uh, in Iowa. Given that your position necessarily immerses you in economic development activities and creating an environment that's conducive for business growth, WIOA is a key tool for you to use when creating and enabling residents to fill jobs in those critical industries. So Iowa's public workforce system, which many of you already know is called Iowa Works, is essential to achieving that vision. It's the network of federally funded programs that are focused specifically on employment and training services. And it's a tool. It's a tool for you to use to develop the talent pipeline that's needed in Iowa and in your community specifically to grow your economy and ensure prosperity. Okay, so let's talk about more about the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. The Iowa Work System that we just talked about is governed by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, or WIOA. WIOA and the public workforce system, as we just said, those are the essential tools to achieving the vision. So it demands the alignment of partners and resources around key industry sectors. And I'm sure you are all well aware of what those key industry sectors are in your own communities. Um, and by demanding the alignment of resources and partners to target those sectors, it seeks to transform the public system into a talent pipeline developer. Uh, and it develops talent, which offers businesses the workforce that they need to grow. And in turn, the workers, um, the opportunities to advance along a career pathway. And you'll hear a lot about career pathways both today and in the upcoming training that we're going to do um, down the road. So WIOA was enacted on July 22, 2014, so just over five years ago. Um, it's designed to help job seekers access employment, education, training, and support services so that they're successful in the labor market. That's one half, and the other half, or the other side of that coin, is to then it also is to also match employers with the skilled workers they need to compete in the global economy. It's designed to be governed at a local level by a private sector-led board. And we'll talk more about that too. Just so you know, Congress passed the act by a wide bipartisan majority, which right is almost unheard of these days, um, and it's the first legislative reform in 15 years of the public workforce system. It outlines the vision, goals, objectives, and requirements for how the public workforce system is structured and operates and brings together the core programs of federal investment and skill development. And we are going to talk a lot about those requirements around structure um, because they're critical to your system transformation. Okay. Um, as the foundation for the system, um, it's important to know that there are five key principles 
um, that are embedded in WIOA, and they're really the principles upon which your local workforce system is to be laid. Uh, the first is integrated service delivery. Um, so the idea here is that all programs within the system, whether it's um, adult services, dislocated worker, youth services, vocational rehabilitation, adult education, you've probably heard of many of these programs and some of you may be very well familiar with them. Um, for a long time, these programs operated somewhat in silos. Well, we always sought to bring them all together to work collaboratively to serve the two customers of the system. And I think you can probably already guess who those two customers are. They're the employer or the business community and the individual job seeker. Programs that provide workforce services, we call them partner programs. Um, the idea here is that the programs do not duplicate each other and they don't work in silos with one another, but instead collaborate to, to integrate and deliver the best outcome for the customer. The second principle is a focus on strategy. So this element is critical to the local workforce board, which you will appoint. The local board should be focused on the big picture of workforce development and strategies um, to ensure that the supply side um, is meeting the demand side. So the supply side being the workers and the demand side being the business community. As a CEO, you lay the groundwork for the board to focus on that strategy. Third principle is regional economic development. So as we've already stated up front here, meeting workforce needs, as we all know, is critical to economic growth, right? It's often the key thing that attracts companies to a new location is the talent that they can tap into. So state and local workforce boards in partnership with those programs and workforce, economic development, education, even social service organizations, they have to align education and training of investments uh, towards regional economic growth strategies. So the idea is that workforce and, and economic development are partnering and collaborating um, to bring in new companies to help the existing companies expand by, again, developing that talent pipeline. High quality services, it's the fourth key principle. So the system has to be focused on high quality services. And to do this, stakeholders have to increase the coordination of programs and resources. And again, the goal here then is to support a comprehensive system that seamlessly provides integrated services with the customer at the center. So the customer being the business community, the customer being the job seeker, always keeping in mind what are their needs and what is the easiest, most streamlined way for them to access those services. Uh, and finally, those high quality services go right along with an evaluative process which determines service excellence. So we owe a calls for the creation of systems of accountability and transparency um, through data analysis and through evaluating performance against key standards. And this means making purposeful decisions about the system and how it will operate, um, as well as operating within key requirements like open meeting laws and procuring service providers and other things that we are going to talk about uh, with you going forward. Okay. So while the system is built on those five key principles that we just reviewed, the outputs of the system are what USDOL calls, sorry, USDOL, that means the United States Department of Labor, caught myself, um, what the United States Department of Labor calls hallmarks of excellence. And you'll see three here uh, in this graphic. Uh, so these are basically um, the outcomes that if the system is designed and implemented the way we owe it envisions, these are the outcomes that you will achieve. Business and job seekers drive workforce solutions. So it's really essential that uh, the system is business led. Otherwise, the talent that comes out of the pipeline might not effectively meet businesses needs. It also means that it's a customer focused, customer centered system. Again, not meeting the needs of government, but meeting the needs of the people using the services. Second hallmark, excellent customer service and a focus on continuous improvement. Uh, and that's through evaluating the work and the services that are being provided, using the data and the information that's available to make adjustments to continuously improve. And the third is that strong regional economies um, and local boards are active in community and workforce development. 
So a local board is truly driving the vision for how workforce services are delivered, executing what is uh, handed down from the state board um, and the governor in terms of a statewide vision, figuring out how to strategically implement that in your community. So in summary, WIO envisions a workforce system that's quality focused, employer driven, customer centered, and tailored to meet the needs of regional economies. The vision is one of collaboration and customer focus with business driving the system's agenda and the range of services. So I just want to, you know, before we move on to talk about some of the specifics, I want to leave you with one other thought, and that's that WIOA is much more than a program, and you've probably already um, figure that out because we're talking much more about concepts here, right, than we are about individual programs. It's a system. It's a system comprised of various elements from workforce development, education, economic development, and they all have app, uh, overlapping goals. And when the system is guided by local elected officials like yourself, who ensure that all elements are working to achieve those same goals, you have the foundation, again, for vibrant regional economies where businesses thrive and people want to live and work. So meeting workforce needs is critical to economic growth. Okay. So let's get into some specifics now. Um, and I'd like to, to take a look at the governance of WIOA. Um, and may, many of you may have already seen something similar to this, which is essentially an, an org chart. Um, and it starts at the top with the US Department of Labor. And I just would like to walk through and explain briefly um, the different entities and help you understand where you fit into this. And again, this will be uh, dug into deeper at the training. Um, going forward. So the US Department of Labor up here at the top is the federal um, agency that provides funding for WIOA, comes to each state through the US Department of Labor. Uh, it has compliance and oversight requirements with the states and it also provides technical assistance. That's one of the reasons Stacy is on this webinar today, right? She is providing technical assistance on behalf of the US Department of Labor. It's also why you've probably heard mention of monitoring reports from USDOL. They have a monitoring and oversight function as well and do formal reviews with written reports. Underneath USDOL is the governor. The governor receives the federal funding from USDOL, which is housed administratively in the state workforce agency. So the governor has to designate a state agency. And for Iowa, that's Iowa Workforce Development or IWD. The governor using the criteria spelled out in the law then appoints the state workforce development board, which you'll see over here uh, with an arrow pointing down from the governor. Uh, the state agency, IWD, which is over to the right, has oversight for the administrative functions of the state and local system. And as a result, IWD has oversight for the role that CEOs, which all of you play in the local system. Next, we come to the CLEOs and the CEOs. They serve as the grant subrecipient and have liability for the funding. The CEOs designate a chief lead elected official, and we're gonna talk more about how all that works, uh, don't worry. Um, and the CLEO, or that chief lead elected official, appoints the local workforce development board. The CLEO may then designate a fiscal agent to receive the funds and pay the bills, right? Keep things happening down at the local level. And you'll see that on our chart here over to the right. The local workforce development board is the governing body for the local workforce development area. And it sets the policy and does the strategic planning for, the, for that area. And finally, the local board in conjunction with the CLEO uh, procures a one-stop operator who may ultimately also provide services to the customer, but serves in a coordination role um, to ensure that services are delivered effectively. And then at the very bottom, you'll see um, that we flow down to the actual Iowa work system um, where the rubber meets the road and where customers are engaged. Okay. 
So with that, I am going to turn it over to Stacy. Um, what we've presented out to you so far is the ideal system, right? This is how WIOA envisions um, the structure and the operations for workforce development around the country. Um, and in our work with IWD and this system, it is a collaborative effort to help Iowa um, meet the challenge of achieving that vision. And there are some changes um, that are going to need to happen. Um, and Stacy's going to walk through why that is and uh, what's really required by the law. So Stacy, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, great. Thanks, Lynn. Hi, everyone. Um, I am here to share some background in terms of um, US DOL's uh, oversight of WIOA implementation in Iowa. Um, the outcomes of our oversight uh, really demonstrate the need for this system transformation that we're talking about today. Um, <clears throat> Before I begin, I just want to um, remind everyone of the chart that Lynn just showed us around the structure of the WIOA system, because it's important to sort of understand uh, who, what everyone's role is um, and how that relates to our monitoring. So the governor receives our WIOA funds, the governor has designated the I Iowa Workforce Development as the state workforce agency that administers those funds. Uh, the governor's appointed a state board as the visionary body in terms of guiding and leading the implement implementation of WIOA across the entire state. Um, and as Lynn indicated, the funds then should flow directly to the chief lead uh, elected official in each designated local workforce development area. Um, and then that chief lead elected official then appoints uh, his or her own uh, local board. So all of this to say that IWD, the Iowa Workforce Development Agency, is our direct grantee. And our monitoring efforts and corrective actions are directed to the State Workforce Agency, or in Iowa, the, the Iowa Workforce Development Agency. Um, so our corrective actions are directed to that state agency but this is all based on the premise that the state workforce agency and the state board are working with the chief elected officials and the local boards um, in order to address any issues and continually improve the system. So back in uh, 2016, uh, we started assessing all of our state workforce agencies in Region 5 um, to take a look at status of WIOA implementation. And we found that the Iowa system um, was really at risk in terms of where it was with implementing the new provisions under WIOA. So for example, at the time, the state and local boards were not compliant in terms of the new membership requirements under WIOA. Um, the partnerships with the uh, WIOA core partners at both state and local levels were still very much a work in progress. And at the local level, the governance structures were not in place. Key players and roles were not being fulfilled. So after that at-risk designation, we followed up with an on-site review in um, the late summer of 2017. 
And it was this review that really revealed the extent of the noncompliance and began some significant discussion around how to get the Iowa system back into compliance. So the report from this review was issued in November 2017. Um, I'm guessing many of you are familiar with this report. I know it's uh, been widely viewed and shared. Um, the issues identified in this report uh, were and are systemic, starting at the state level with the workforce agency and the state board and then uh, moving all the way down through the local system and the local structure. Uh, we found an, uh, a very outdated local area structure that um, you know, some of you may know, but it was established um, in the 1980s, actually the early 1980s under uh, the Job Training Partnership Act. Um, and we saw with this structure, uh, we saw WIOA funding stretch so thin across 15 local areas that none of the key roles, functions, or structures required under WIOA were in place. And just to give you an example of what I mean uh, by funding being stretched so thin, um, and, and sort of an outdated local area structure. Um, as compa in, in comparison, if we look at the state of Kansas, Kansas is really is, is one of our states that whose allocation of WIOA and Wagner-Pizer money looks almost exactly uh, the same as Iowa's allocation. Iowa has, it spreads that money across 15 local areas. Kansas spreads it across five. So that just gives you an idea of the disparity. Um, and then if we can move to the next slide. Um, since the report was issued, there has been, you know, uh, significant effort put towards figuring out, you know, what does compliance look like in Iowa? How does the Iowa system um, achieve compliance? And so this slide reflects what compliance looks like locally. And that isn't to say that the state does not at the state level with the state agency and the state board that um, there aren't changes, improvements uh, that, that need to be made to achieve compliance. This slide and, and for the purpose of this session, we're focusing on um, for you all on the local level. So locally, compliance includes having local workforce development areas that have adequate funding to ensure that all key roles in the local system and required under WIOA can be fulfilled while still having uh, or maximizing your funding for customers, for direct services to the customers in your communities that needs services. Um, compliance also means having active and engaged chief local elected officials who understand their roles and responsibilities under WIOA. Um, you all are the key players in uh, moving this forward locally. Um, it also means that as CEOs, you have appointed um, effective local board members. Um, your boards are fully functioning. They're performing all of the, um, I think, 15 required functions 
that need to be performed under WIOA. And to do this, um, WIOA explicitly acknowledges that local boards need qualified staff support. And so for the first time, um, we have statutory and regulatory authority for both state and local boards to hire a director and other staff in order to carry out their required functions. We also have statute and regulation around what qualifications those staff should possess. And that really speaks to the significance of the role of the staff to the local workforce development boards. So with that, I, I'll just say that, um, you know, I, I hope that this has given you all a better picture in terms of the need for the entire system in Iowa to work together. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be hard work, but changes and improvements need to happen um, in order to uh, create a successful, a compliant, and a effective WIOA system in Iowa. Thank you, Stacy. Um, all right, well, Stacy talked at length, it was very helpful um, about the requirements to ensure compliance. I wanna talk a little bit about the benefits of compliance. Um, obviously, a clear benefit is the assurance of ongoing federal funding. Um, and that's funding is essential, we all know, um, to workforce and economic development in every state, not just Iowa. Um, but the benefits do go beyond simply sustained resources. Um, so as we talked about, you know, this structure lays that foundation uh, for the, sy the system to actually achieve those hallmarks of excellence that I talked about before. Um, so by making those key changes that Stacy described, Iowa Works as a system will be better positioned um, to meet the following, you'll see here on the screen, key operating and governing principles, right? So um, promoting accountability, transparency and high quality services, supporting the role, the key role of workforce development as a regional economic development tool, which I know is really important to all of you as chief elected officials. Um, the state and local areas better align those programs so that they no longer work in silos, um, but are all you know, shooting their arrows at the same investments, right? The same investments in workforce and economic development and engaging in unified planning um, to make sure that they have a common vision, common goals and uh, integrated operations. Aligning programs and services to reduce costs and streamline service delivery so that customers get the most and um, effective services that they can. Um, and then finally, and this is critical, it's empowering those local boards to really step in and drive a strategic vision for talent development in their communities. So not just signing off on a policy, not just approving whatever local agency tells them they should approve, but really taking ownership and driving the vision for their community. Um, that's why it's so critical that those, those boards are business led. All right, so I think we pause here um, to see if there are any questions that may have come in in the chat box. Um, Lori or Rhiannon, do we have any questions? Um, yes, uh, this is Lori. We've had a couple of questions. One um, I want to go ahead and answer right now, and then the other one I'm pulling the answer together and we'll give it by the end of the webinar because I want to make sure that I answer it properly. So the one question that um, it was just recently asked is can, um, are the local development boards required to provide the funds or just administer state and federal funds? And by provide, the asker was, the asker was asking, uh, give money from their property tax or other revenues. So let's, uh, to answer that, let me do it this way. We're talking about two groups of people. Um, the, there are the group of chief elected officials 
who uh, provide governance and oversight to the system. And those are individuals who moving forward in Iowa, the draft policy that the state board will vote on next month, the chief elected officials in Iowa will be the chairs of the county boards of supervisors. So those individuals are um, provide governance and oversight to the system and by virtue of the law are liable for the federal funds that come into their designated local workforce area. Um, there is no requirement on that body that they put up any local dollars for the workforce system in order to run the workforce system or manage the workforce system. Now, the local board is a separate body. It is a board that the um, chief elected officials appoint and it is required to be 51% private sector and it is required to be chaired by somebody from the private sector. That board provides oversight as well to the WIOA funds that come into that local area. That body has oversight for the WIOA budget and whatever other funding streams that the governor designates to the local areas. And at this point, it's my understanding in Iowa that that is only the WIOA dollars. So, um, so no, there is no requirement that chief elected officials put up tax revenue. However, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. Because the law um, prescribes liability of those federal dollars to those local elected officials, in an event of misuse of funds, those elected officials are liable for those funds. And in a situation, and we're talking about an extreme situation where there's been, um, you know, um, an investigation and stuff, but if there's a situation where money has to be repaid to the U.S. Department of Labor, um, those dollars would have to be paid back out of non-federal funds. So that's an example, and the only example I can think of, where local dollars could come into play. Now, a local um, jurisdiction, a county or a city, could obviously choose to appropriate local dollars for workforce development activities, but there is no requirement that they do so. So that's a long-winded answer, but I felt like that it needed um, some explanation to make sure that we were all on the same page in answering that. And this is Stacy. Can I address a couple of comments that I'm seeing coming into the to the chat? Absolutely, please. So I just want to clarify. Um, I I see uh, uh, a concern around uh, my mention of the five local areas in the state of Kansas, and um, you know that just because you have you know, fewer or five local areas does not mean you have a better system. And that my point was not around the quality of the system. My point was really to be that, um, to demonstrate or illustrate uh, the same amount of money and the impact of um, stretching that money across 15 versus five. And um, what we saw in the local areas we looked at in Iowa two years ago was that um, certain roles were not being fulfilled because of lack of funding. So um, the Kansas illustration is not to say they have a good system or a better system. It's simply to illustrate how the same amount of money and our funding uh, is distributed in, um, in two different states, Iowa versus Kansas. Um, so I hope I've, I've cleared that up. And then um, 
In terms of liability, I see a comment about CIETC. Um, that was actually the first time that I uh, spoke with uh, local elected officials in Iowa was after um, that situation. And I think it was very eye-opening, um, you know, for those local elected officials at that time to understand what liability meant. And so uh, I think Lori's uh, explanation was a good one. And then one other comment that I saw come in was related to what, what seemed to me to be related to, I think the, the wording, what the language was, does the state board trump the local board or does the local board trump the state board? And um, what I, the comment that I wanna make about that is, um, you know, the funding flows to the governor and uh, the governor appoints the state board to set a broad vision um, and goals for the statewide workforce system. And there are a number of requirements that um, local areas need to fulfill that, that do need to be aligned with the state board and the governor's vision um, for the workforce system across Iowa. So for example, um, the state will establish criteria for the local elected officials to use at a minimum in appointing board members. Um, and the theory is that, you know, that criteria will help uh, to, to get the right people on the board for meeting the vision, the strategy, the goals that are established at the state level. Um, the local plan, um, you know, which is your, the local level's opportunity, the board uh, working with its staff to really uh, frame a workforce system at the local level that aligns with uh, the state plan. So that there is that expectation. And, that, and so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. I mean, it's not that one trumps the other, it's we're looking for alignment, coordination, and achievement of goals. Right. Thank you, Stacey. Um, one, um, one other clarification to make. So uh, there have been a number of questions and comments that have come in around this. And then, um, I, so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear about it. The draft policy that the State Workforce Board is voting on in September around who is a chief elected official in Iowa. The exact language is the chair of the County Board of Supervisors or a designee from within the County Board of Supervisors. So one person's comment was, well, maybe the chair of the County Board of Supervisors isn't the best person, perhaps, or, or perhaps, you know, there could be a number of reasons. So that person may designate another, but the person designated must also be an elected official at the county level from within the Board of Supervisors, okay? You all have some great questions and um, keep those coming in. Um, we will, yes, uh, go ahead. Oh, Lori, I was just going to say I, that Michelle or other folks at IWD, I'm not sure if they wanted to respond to any as oh, well. okay, sure. And, Oh, go ahead. Sorry, um, this is Michelle McNerney, and I was just going to say that um, I, you know, I fully support everything that you guys are saying, and clear. I was wanting to clarify the the draft definition as well. So, but Lori just took those words right out of my mouth. So. <laughs> Lori, for clarifying that. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And this is Stacy. I just want to, <clears throat> so that uh, nobody is confused as we move forward. I see a question about the terms regional and local. Um, WIOA um, speaks to two different things, a local workforce development area and planning regions. What we're talking about today are local workforce development areas, which in Iowa are called regions. 
Okay, so we, uh, thank you, Stacey and Michelle. So we're gonna move forward, keep your questions coming. We will answer those um, as best as we can and as quickly as we can. And then we will definitely have time at the end of the webinar to address those as well. Lori, can I just jump in? We just received yeah. a question about um, the DOL appeals process and why are we moving yep. forward? So I think that's probably an important one to answer. I don't know if Stacy or you um, can can speak to that, um, you know, why we're moving forward with this process while that appeal is pending. Okay. Stacy, do you want to answer that or would that be better from one of us? No, I mean, um, the appeal is still pending, um, but there is nothing uh, within that appeal to uh, prohibit the state and the local system from moving forward with system transformation. Um, Iowa needs to, the system needs to continue to move towards compliance. Um, you know, uh, compliance has been an issue now since 2016. So there really is no, op no other option than continuing to move forward with system transformation. Um, all of these things, you know, compliance needs to happen whether Iowa has 15 local areas or uh, six local areas. Um, so, and there, there's nothing within the process legally that prohibits moving forward. Right. Okay. Can I jump in here, please? Who was that? This is Kathy Rock. Sure, Kathy, go ahead. Hey, I am the um, Chief Operating Officer for Iowa Workforce Development um, and work in tandem with Michelle in regards to moving us to the WIOA compliance. And I see, excuse me, some of the questions that are being asked in regards to how have we misspent any money? Why are we needing to do this? And back to the beginning of the presentation, the reason why we need to do this and why we're doing this now is that, as Stacy mentioned, we are not in um, the compliance with our system right now as it pertains to the requirements of WIOA from the US Department of Labor. And in order to move us into compliance with that, one of the biggest things that we saw that we needed to do is to step back, re-educate everyone involved in the workforce system, and then get a baseline of understanding. And this is the beginning kickoff of that. So no one has lost any momentum or any any traction in that, we're all moving towards this together. We are going to make this together. And so your involvement today is greatly appreciated, but I wanna make sure that we clearly know it isn't because anybody has been misspending money. It isn't because we have not been providing the best services that we can possibly uh, provide, but perhaps we could provide better. But more importantly, it's because we have to become compliant with the requirements of the US DOL in regards to the new workforce system. And frankly, we're five years behind. And uh, it, we're, we've come to a crossroad that we have to do this in order to continue to get the federal funding that we all want to be able to build the best workforce system in Iowa. So I just wanted to add that to make sure that everybody understands this isn't because anybody's in trouble, it's because what we're trying to do is prevent ourselves from being in a situation that we are in trouble so we're starting from the beginning, investing time and money to re-educate to get everybody on board. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Kathy. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. Um, hopefully this next section will answer some of those questions um, around system transformation um, and uh, give you all a little more clarity as we go along. So please continue to, to send your questions in. Um, we will address the questions that we can address. There is going to be face-to-face -face training that um, 
uh, occurs in September and October. Um, and so we will be there on the ground with you in Iowa. And any questions that we're not able to get to today, we will make sure that we get the answers to you um, as timely as possible. And then some of these things will be great discussions for whenever we're face to face with you all in, in Iowa too. So, so with the system transformation, um, Effectively and authentically meeting this challenge will require more than simply reducing regions or local areas and issuing some new policy. The system must fully transform to achieve both a vision for economic prosperity and become compliant with the key Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act principles and provisions uh, that are required by the federal law. So let's move forward now to review the steps for the Iowa Workforce System Transformation Effort. Um, so on this graphic, um, we've attempted to highlight some key deadlines that are between February 2019, a few months ago, and December 2020. Um, like all systematic change, the workforce system transformation will take time and a lot of hard work, and we're not we're not pretending um, to, to believe that, that this is not easy work um, because it, it's, it's complex and it's hard. The State Workforce Board formally initiated the transformation effort with the vote in February to realign the local workforce areas. This graphic notes a few key steps along the way and the ultimate goal of um, Iowa work centers being certified by local boards and we're projecting that that will happen by December of 2020. One thing to note that is not listed on the graphic is the date by which one-stop operator procurement must be complete. And what that means is your local Iowa work centers um, must have a, an operator, an entity that coordinates the services across the partners, um, and that operator must be competitively procured. That is a requirement from the law. That is not an Iowa specific requirement. We are projecting along with IWD that that um, date that that will need to be completed by is December 1, 2020. Now, that may seem like it's far away. The procurement process is slated to begin in July of 2020, so a little under a year. That process must be undertaken with compliant local boards in place and with fiscal agents designated by chief elected officials. Those steps will happen in the spring of 2020 to ensure ample time for the one-stop operator procurement process to begin in July. Next slide. So, Let's talk about the realignment. So we, we know that that's um, on the forefront of a lot of people's minds, and we've sort of already gone through some of the information on this slide, but, but I want to, to go through it again. The first step in the transformation was the work that the state board did earlier this year to approve a new configuration of local workforce boards from 15 to six. This change will ensure enough financial resources to support chief elected officials and local boards fulfilling their significant roles under WIOA, while maximizing funding for career counseling, training, supportive services, and services to businesses to meet their talent needs. Next slide. So this is a map of the um, six new local workforce areas. Um, this came up in one of the questions that was just asked, and, um, and I don't know that we actually addressed it. So um, the, the work of transformation has to continue. Kathy talked about that a little bit, and Stacy talked about that a little bit. It's important to also know that as a chief elected official designated as such for purposes of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, your roles and responsibilities are the exact same whether there are 15 local workforce areas in Iowa, whether there are 37 local workforce development areas in Iowa, or whether there are six. 
So while we know that that is a topic that has a lot of people's attention and rightly so, there is a process, a, an appeal process underway, and that has to have its time to, to live and breathe and, and for that process to occur. But in the meantime, we cannot slow down the important um, stakeholder engagement work that needs to happen. And in this webinar today, the training that we're going to come and do with you all face to face in a few weeks, those things um, still move forward because they're the same regardless of the number of local areas. Okay. So I think I, <laughs> I covered that slide. So we'll go on to the next slide. So, well, actually, Lynn, I'm sorry, let's back up. So just a couple of things to point out as it relates to the appeal process. Um, you know, there is an appeal that has been received by the US Department of Labor. There is an established regulatory appeals process. And so per those guidelines, the US Department of Labor requested information from Iowa and Iowa supplied that information. And it is in process. And um, that response will happen um, uh, when it happens. But in the meantime, the realignment, and most importantly, the, the transformation work continues. Now we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> so step two um, in the system transformation framework, in the system transformation, was uh, the development of a framework um, or a roadmap to guide the system through the many steps required to reach compliance. And we've heard a good deal today about the things that need to happen to reach compliance. And this webinar um, is one of the things that we hope lays um, a good groundwork and a good foundation for you all as chief elected officials as you all begin um, some work over the next few months the, uh, to bring the system into compliance. This is not uh, just the appointment of new boards, but boards that are operating in accordance with the WIOA vision principles and required provisions. This framework in its complete form is in depth. It's very in depth covering over a hundred tasks and subtasks to be carried out by various stakeholders in the Iowa system, including chief elected officials, you guys, the state workforce board, state partner agencies, and existing and new local workforce development boards between now and the end of 2020. And those new local workforce development boards will be appointed by the chief elected officials by you, by you all. So let's look at a high level version of that plan now to give you a sense of the scope of the work ahead. So um, it began with the identification of the new local workforce areas. Um, and, and it also includes um, steps for um, key stakeholders, um, the state board, you all, core agencies, we just talked about that. But the, the framework runs through, as I mentioned earlier, December of 2020, and culminates with the certification of um, Iowa work centers by the local boards. All right, so step three um, in the um, system transformation is implementation of the framework. So uh, part of what is happening is education out to stakeholders um, that you all today, we did a similar webinar yesterday for the state, state workforce board, um, local workforce board members and, and others on the value and provisions of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act to empower them to fulfill their roles and responsibilities under the law. Another key task that is in process is the establishment of a state level WIOA core partner working group comprised of representatives from the following agencies, Iowa Workforce Development, Vocational Rehabilitation Services, Department for the Blind, and the Department of Education, all of which oversee key workforce programs that are named specifically within the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and are designated as core programs under the act. 
The working group will be charged with collaborating to carry out the vision and strategy established by Governor Reynolds and the State Workforce Board by developing joint policy and an integrated approach for monitoring program oversight, delivering support and technical assistance for local service delivery and design. That core working group will also develop an issue policy and guidance, which ensures that the system components, including local boards, administrative entities for local boards, one-stop operators, and service providers are operating in compliance with and in full support of WIOA requirements and key principles. Next slide. All right, so we'll stop right there. And Rhiannon or Lynn, are there any questions that have come in that now would be a good time to answer? I'm not seeing additional questions in my chat box. Rhiannon, are, are, do you have anything beyond 12.55 p.m. in yours? Okay, well then okay. we will we will keep charging through <laughs> and um, now we're going to oh Lori there was a question there are a couple questions <laughs> okay so I see it are we required to attend chief elected official training in our own region well that is a great question and so the trainings and we're going to share the dates and all of that with you all at the end of this webinar we've set up uh, IWD has set up six trainings one to occur in each of the new local workforce development areas the idea is that the chief elected officials from those areas come together literally come together and are trained together so that you all can work together on some key things that you need to be doing so ideally yes but if for some reason um, the date that the training is scheduled for your local area um, doesn't work for you then um, by all means attend a different training because the the the, the training is going to be the same it's just going to uh, be carried out in six locations so hopefully that answers the question the key thing is we want you to get trained, so. And there is another question, Lori. It says, is an Iowa workforce center the same as a local office of IWD? I will defer to Michelle to answer that question, um, if she can. Yes, I was just actually typing response, but I can definitely, um, I believe, yeah, in the context that you're using it, the Iowa Workforce Center, um, it's also referred as an AJC, an American Job Center, is the same thing as the local office um, for Iowa Workforce Development. So each of the 15 regions has at least one um, comprehensive American Job Center or Iowa Workforce, uh, Iowa Work Center. I think that we interchangeably use several terms for that um meaning but so yes the answer is yes and i was also just typing to jim specifically but if anybody um can't attend the training session that they received an invitation to please reach out to me and i will coordinate with you um another session to be able to attend attend and i'm just putting my email address in the chat box for you all for that too awesome and her email address will also pop up at the end of the webinar slides um, as a contact too so all right so we're going to move forward and this is where we're going to talk specifically about the roles and responsibilities of chief elected officials as given to them by the law itself okay um, so let's go on to the next slide so we're going to cover um, um, both the roles and responsibilities of chief elected officials under WIOA, as well as your critical role in support of the system transformation effort. Um, but first, let's visit some key facts about chief elected officials within WIOA. So let's, there we go. So the CEOs, chief elected officials, lay the foundation for the workforce system at the local level. As representatives of the individuals who elected you, the chief elected officials represent the public side of the public-private partnership that oversees the local workforce system. The board, appointed by the chief elected officials, represents the private side of that public-private partnership, given that the majority of board members are required to be representatives of the private sector. As such, Chief elected officials and local boards enter into a partnership agreement, which you will learn more about at the face-to-face -face training, which outlines their respective roles within the partnership. 
So here is where, um, and although we covered it earlier, um, that third bullet there um, is the definition, the working definition in Iowa for a chief elected official. All right, next slide. So the law gives specific duties to uh, what is called a chief local elected official, or as it's being called in Iowa, a chief lead elected official. Um, so when the chief elected officials get together, um, they will designate one person within their group who will represent them. The law gives specific duties to that CLEO or chief lead elected official. However, it is expected that the CLEO is operating within the power given to her or him by the group of chief elected officials. The chief elected official shared liability agreement, which you all will hear a little bit about today and then learn a great deal about during training, must outline the process for designating the CLEO and the decisions and actions the CLEO can make on behalf of the broader group of elected officials. Um, if you need to think about it this way, uh, this is what makes sense in my head. The CLEO position is similar to the role of a board chair on any board you may be familiar with. Next slide. So the law um, talks about roles and responsibilities for elected officials, and we'll now look at those. Um, they can be divided into four main categories. Appointment and selection, two, review and approve, three, high-level oversight, and four, strategic planning. Some of the responsibilities of elected officials are shared with the local board, and some are specific to the elected officials, and we'll cover both of those today. So first, let's take a look at the appointment and selection roles. Most likely, the very first thing a group of elected officials will want to do is determine um, how the CLEO will be selected and proceed with making that selection. The chief elected officials will determine a nomination process for the local board members, and the CLEO will make the official appointments to the board. During the face-to-face -face trainings, we, which will occur in September and October, we will discuss local board membership requirements and how to go about the process of seeking nominations to the local board and the process you need to follow to officially make those appointments to the local board. CEOs share financial liability for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act funds that come to their area. The CLEO, that is the lead elected official, serves as the grant subrecipient, but the CLEO may designate a fiscal agent. The fiscal agent would be the entity to receive the funds to pay the bills on behalf of the local board and track spending, as well as other duties, but those are a few of the key ones. If a fiscal agent is not designated, the CLEO and her or his um, government jurisdiction assumes the responsibility. The law says that you may designate a fiscal agent, so it's a decision that would be made by the group. Um, it's not one that has to be done, but if it's not, again, the CLEO um, assumes that responsibility. Lastly, it is required that the one-stop operator, and we talked a little bit about that earlier, be selected through a competitive procurement process. As elected officials, I know that you're fully aware of procurement processes. One-stop operator is the entity that runs the Iowa Works offices and ensures that services are delivered in an excellent manner. The law requires that this process be competitively bid. Next slide. Next are the duties um, um, for review and approve. So these are to um, create initial bylaws for the local board, approve the local board budget, approve approval of non-mandatory one-stop partners, comment on the state plan, and negotiate performance measures. I should have mentioned this. I'm sorry that I didn't. Um, if on these slides, if it has an asterisk at the end, that denotes 
a task that you do in conjunction with the local board. So once you have worked with your fellow chief elected officials to establish the infrastructure for the local system, your duties mostly fall into review and approve and high level oversight. We'll now look at review and approve. With chief elected officials being responsible for the board member nomination process, um, Lynn, go back a slide. Thanks. Uh, with CEOs being responsible for the board member nomination process, the CEOs are also responsible for the initial bylaws of the board. Within these bylaws, the CEOs will make the determination for the initial size of the board. Face-to-face -face training, in the face-to-face -face training we'll walk, uh, that we'll talk about at the end of the webinar today, we will go deeper into board membership categories and requirements and, and those sorts of things to ensure that you all are equipped with the information you need to make those appointments per the law and per um, any Iowa code requirements. CEOs will work with the local board to approve the local budget, approve non-mandatory partners into the system. And so what that means is the law requires certain agencies and certain programs be a part of the one-stop system. And um, as the entity that provides local governance, you along with the board can choose to add local partners um, to, that, to that system. You can't take away from what the law requires, but you can certainly add to if it benefits the system. So the CEOs will work with the local board to approve the budget, approve non-mandatory partners in the system, comment on the state plan, which is uh, something that uh, the state board oversees, and is submitted to the U.S. Department of Labor, and negotiate performance measures with IWD. Performance measures are the outcomes measurements by which the local workforce development gets graded, quote unquote, and for services delivered. It is based on criteria such as job seeking customers getting and keeping jobs. So next slide. So, um, Next, we're at high-level oversight roles. Um, where there is a multi-jurisdictional local workforce development area, so there is a group of counties, not just one county, although in the country there are some local workforce areas that are just one county, but where there are multi, there's a multi-jurisdictional area, an interlocal agreement is required between the elected officials. This agreement um, is known um, or will be known in Iowa as a CEO shared liability agreement. It will outline the work the CEOs do together as well as distribute financial liability across the multiple governments. Um, again, the CLIO serves as the grant subrecipient and as we learned on the previous slide may designate a fiscal agent. The governor appoints at least two chief elected officials to serve on the state board. So this is a responsibility that's on the slide because we wanted you to be aware of it, but it's not something that every chief elected official in Iowa is going to do. It's, um, this responsibility falls into the may category, not a must category. The local uh, workforce development board will develop a memorandum of understanding or MOU because we love acronyms that outlines how the various one stop partners will deliver services within the local Iowa work system. This document should address which partners provide which services to ensure that services are delivered in an integrated way. If you remember, Lynn talked in the beginning about one of the key principles of WIOA is integrated services. And so this document that we're talking about now, the MOU, is really where um, the integration um, of, of those services gets documented so that there's a standard um, to, to hold people to and, and you know when you've arrived because you've outlined what that integration needs to look like. Um, after 
As you recall, integrated services is one of the governing principles for the system. We just talked about that. After local attempts to solve local issues, should there be an impasse with one or more MOU partners, the chief elected official through the CLIO would notify the governor or her designated agency, which in this case is IWD, of the impasse. And so it's, it's clearly mentioned in the law that that is a role of the um, elected officials should it come to that. The governor may intervene to solve, to solve the issue. All right. Um, another um, uh, task or role of CEOs under the high level, high level oversight category is requesting local workforce development area designation and be consulted during the decision making process. Um, another is um, should the local board want to transfer funds between programs and this is specifically Meaning, and this may be really in the weeds for some of you all, so I won't go too far into these weeds, but um, two of the main pots of money under WIOA are adult and dislocated worker. And the law allows transfer, 100% transfer of funds between those two programs. But in order to do that, the local board has to have your approval. Um, and so uh, you would request that of the governor if you approve of that decision to do that or not necessarily of the governor, but of IWD in this case. And lastly, there are instances in which a governor may have to decertify a local board and reorganize a new board in its place. And in that situation, the governor um, is required under WIOA to consult with chief elected officials in the reorganization of a new local board. So next slide. And then the final high level oversight role, and this is one as you'll see that you do in consultation with the local board, is ensure the appropriate use, management, and investment of funds to maximize performance outcomes. So this is really um, the governance and management of that local system it really rests here. So ensuring that it is functioning properly, it is accountable, it is transparent, it is meeting the needs of Iowans that are seeking jobs, it is meeting the needs of business and industry that is hiring and looking to hire and, and all of those things. That high level oversight function really happens right here. This slide really contains, contains it. So, um, and last. Um, are the strategic planning roles. And um, these are all done in consultation with the local board. So the last category of roles and responsibilities is strategic planning. Um, strategic planning is where you will be intentional and purposeful in planning workforce and economic goals for your local workforce development area. You and the board will set a vision for the local system. What does the local system need to do, for example, to produce more skilled workers or meet the demands of a growing industry? What are the growing industry sectors for your local workforce area? You and the board ask and answer these questions as well as other questions to determine the vision for the local system. No entity decides that for you, not IWD, not the state board, not the community college, but you as the chief elected officials and the board in that public private partnership that we talked about before. For purposes of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, the law outlines that there are local workforce development area boundaries. You're familiar with those boundaries because we've talked about that. Um, you're familiar with the old ones. You're familiar with the new ones. WIOA also establishes, and, and Stacey talked about this a little bit, WIOA also establishes regions which are defined or can be defined differently than local workforce development areas. Now, um, People sometimes use the term local area and region interchangeably. Um, WIOA really sought to um, establish those as different concepts, um, just so you know. Regional boundaries could be two or more local areas grouped together. Within that regional structure, the boards and chief elected officials are expected to collaborate on how administrative costs could be shared to maximize efficiencies and to conduct regional planning regarding workforce strategies. But breathe a sigh of relief. Um, at this point in Iowa, the regions 
um, which as we just mentioned is a separate designation than the local workforce area, will actually be the same as the local area. I know that this issue may be confusing. Just know that this is not a topic that requires your attention at this time. Um, and it is a topic that will be addressed down the road once compliance is established. All right. Let me try and catch up here with myself on my slides. Give me just one second. Okay, sorry about that. So now that we've covered the system transformation tasks and the timeline, as well as the role of the chief elected official per the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, what can you do in the coming months? Um, we want you to understand the purpose and the benefit and the key components of the system transformation effort. It is um, not just about reducing the number of local areas in Iowa. It is certainly not about closing offices in Iowa. It is about moving the system into compliance. Um, and as a part of that, there was a decision made to reduce the local areas. And as chief elected officials who have, who are key stakeholders in the system, we want you all to have the right information so that you all can, one, get your questions answered. You know, you all should feel like that any question that you have about this, you one, know who to go to to get that answered. And two, you know what it means for um, Iowa as a whole, but also your county and the, the local area that you're grouped in, be it six or 15. And when you're equipped with that information, we want you to use that to respond to inquiries from maybe the existing local board or another elected official or other key partners within the system. Um, we want you also to champion this transformation effort um, to help build buy-in and understanding across the system. And then another role and responsibility, and you've heard us talk about it a few times today, is we want you to participate in the upcoming face-to-face -face training with your peers to learn more about your role and to also learn about the tools and resources available to assist you. So, next slide. So again, just kind of hitting, hitting some of these same things. Um, some of the key talking points for you all um, to know and understand when engaging with the system and with the public on the transformation effort. The change in the number of local areas was done to maximize the limited funding available in Iowa. The governance structure, and remember what Stacy said in the beginning, Iowa to date has not been in compliance with the required governance structure. The governance structure requires work at the local level. Your role as a chief elected official is to provide high level, high level oversight and governance. The local board that you will appoint also provides oversight and direction as well, but their role is not to be operational or in the weeds with the day-to-day -day work. This is why local boards need staff to operationalize the vision set by you and the board. And in order for boards to have staff that can operationalize the vision, there has to be adequate funding at a local level to hire staff that have the requisite knowledge, skills, and abilities to do this work. And um, just reminding what Stacey talked about, the law, the law, the writers of the law thought that this piece was so important that they put, they put words in the law around the skills and abilities needed by board staff um, to, to operationalize that vision. Number two, the system is designed to be locally driven by you and the local board, not by a single entity and not by, um, and not by the state agency. Um, and the state agency is not trying to do that, but it is to be driven by you. And that is one of the, um, basic principles or foundational pieces of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. 
And the work of transformation will require partnership across all programs. It's not just um, the WIOA funded uh, programs that, that, that have to transform. There's transformation happening with the rehabilitation services and with the Department for the Blind and with the adult education providers. All of those um, have requirements under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. So next slide. So I am going to stop talking for a minute and I'm gonna turn it back over to Lynn and let her talk you all through the next steps um, that's coming up for you guys. Okay, thanks Lori and um, thanks everyone for sticking with us. I know we are almost out of time. Um, so I will move as quickly as I can through this. Um, and I see that uh, Michelle has been responding to questions on the chat, which is great. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and if we have time at the end, we can hit any additional questions that come up. So uh, save the date and we're going to give you dates here in just a second. Um, uh, we've been talking about this upcoming training now for throughout the webinar. Um, I just want to let you know what we plan to do with that training. It's a, a half a day session um, where we're going to do a deeper dive and we'll talk more about this vision, principles, and requirements for WIOA. Um, basically explain, you know, why all of this is required. Why does this structure um, achieve better results um, than what you have now, essentially? That is the, the premise baked into WIOA, the law across the country. Um, we'll dig into the public workforce system structure um, and talk further about your roles and responsibilities under WIOA. So why attend? Um, well, it's our hope that the training is going to provide the information and the tools that you need to actually use WIOA and Iowa Works, um, like we described in the beginning, as a tool to drive local workforce development and economic growth in your community. Um, and we're going to include key information that we hope will help you fulfill your role as the foundational piece of the workforce system and, as Lori just pointed out, champions for this transformation effort. Um, the trainings will occur um, in the newly designated regions. Um, so there will be one in each of the six regions here in the map. I'm sorry, I'm confusing things as well. Six local areas, not regions. Um, and these are the dates and times uh, and city location for each of those trainings. Um, please know that there will be a follow-up email to this webinar which provides these slides. Um, Michelle has also sent out invitations um, that has more information. Uh, so you will have all of this. Um, Included in that follow-up email will also be um, a link to a survey evaluation that you can complete, uh, where you can also give us input into additional training and topics you would like to see covered. Um, if it's helpful, I want to, um, I'm going to skip ahead and come back one sec here to this slide, um, because this tells you which local area your county resides in, in case you don't already know. So uh, please take a minute to take a look at this. And as I said, you will also receive these slides. I wanna point out on the right-hand column um, is the IWD contact person for your county. Um, so uh, IWD, and we certainly agreed, felt it was really important that you have someone that you can reach out to um, as soon as today <laughs> and going forward. Um, as Lori said before, this is gonna be quite an effort, right? Change is hard and you're gonna need support. As questions come up, if you're unsure of the, the next step, if you know that there's support you need, you should reach out to your assigned person on the right-hand column here, Michael Witt, Linda Rouse, or Ronay Slagle, um, to get help. That is, is what they are here for. So I'm gonna back up. Again, I just want to tell you quickly that coming soon, um, the Iowa State Workforce Development Board web board webpage um, is going to be set up to be a repository of information around all things system transformation. Um, and that's where this webinar link will be posted along with the state board webinar, um, the governor's message and other resources as they are developed. Um, and updates, you know, as updates come out, they will be posting them there as well. So once that link is uh, ready and available up and running, um, that will be sent out to you as well. Um, okay, any final questions? 
Uh, did anything else come into the chat box, Lori or Rhiannon? I'm going through it now. Uh, one question, I, an answer, Michelle answered this, and I'm reading through it now, but I can't read and talk at the same time. So I just want to make sure that, that this, this question got answered. So the question is, are the CEOs on one board and the business appointees on another, or is everyone on the same local board? For the purposes of WIOA, when we talk about the local board, we're talking about the board that is required to be 51% private sector that is appointed by the local elected officials, by those chief elected officials. There is not a requirement that the chief elected officials be on a local board. Um, they certainly can be, but there is not a requirement. So what you most likely will have happen in Iowa is you will have the group of chief elected officials and then you will have your local board. If that grouping of chief elected officials is referred to as a board, that, that is fine. But, but when, for purposes of WIOA, when we say board, we're talking about the one that is appointed by the elected officials that has statutory requirements and must be 51% private sector. I hope that is helpful. And we're going to get into all of those um, membership requirements at the trainings. Thanks, Lori. And mm -hmm. the other thing that we can do with the face-to-face -face training that we can't do here, obviously, is build in time for direct interaction, where you can raise questions, you can engage with your peers. Um, and so we really uh, know that that's going to be an important um, three hours that we spend with you. Another reason we really hope that you, that you can attend. Um, let me go here. Uh, if you have the time and the inclination before that face-to-face -face training, there are a couple of resources that we think might be really helpful. Um, the National Association of Counties, NACO, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, has put out some resources specifically around counties and WIOA. Um, I found it great. I think you might enjoy it too if you take a look at that. And then also Department of Labor site um, has a, a high level overview. It has specific WIOA policy and additional resources that you can access as well. Um, you may want to do that and come in to our training um, armed with questions. That, that would be great. Um, and it would hopefully reinforce some of the material that we've uh, presented out for you today. Um, uh, let's see, someone's asking me to go back to the destinations. Well, the, hold on, sorry, wrong slide. Here we go, I think you want this one. Um, looks like we have to go to Iowa City. Uh, it could be that venues have changed since things were originally scheduled, but I believe that Michelle, um, oh, the slide may be incorrect based on the error made by, okay. Uh, um, Lori, so let me just go over it really quickly here and I'm gonna try to do this in order. Um, but the um, first training is on September 18th from 12 to 4.30. It's in Osceola at the Public Library, and that's for the new Region 6, um, which is Adair, Adams, Appanoose, Cass, Clark, Davis, Decatur, Fremont, Harris, Harrison, sorry, Jefferson, Keokuk, Lucas, Mahaska, Mills, Monroe, Montgomery, Page, Pottawatomie, Ringgold, Shelby, Taylor, Union, Van Buren, Wapolo, and Wayne counties. Um, the next training then is scheduled for Friday, September 20th from 12 to 4.30 in Des Moines at Goodwill of Central Iowa, actually in Johnston. That's for the new Region 3, which is um, the counties of Audubon, Boone, Carroll, Dallas, Guthrie, Jasper, Madison, Marion, Polk, Story, and Warren. Um, and then the next training takes place on Monday, September 30th. And that one will be in Muscatine at the uh, Public Library. And that's for the new Region 5, which consists of Clinton, Des Moines, Henry, Jackson, Lee, Louisa, Muscatine, and Scott counties. Um, October 1st, the training will be in Coralville, Iowa at the Coralville Public Library for the new Region 4, which is um, Benton, Cedar, Hardin, Iowa, Johnson, Jones, Lynn, Marshall, Powashik, Tama, and Washington counties. Um, on October 
2nd. The training is in Waterloo at Upper Iowa University um, for the new Region 2 northeast corner of the state, which is Alamakee, Blackhawk, Bremer, Buchanan, Butler, Cerro Gordo, Chickasaw, Clayton, Delaware, Dubuque, Fayette, Floyd, Franklin, Grundy, Hancock, Howard, Mitchell, Winnebago, Winnesheek, and Worth counties. Um, and then on October 3rd, uh, the new Region 1 training, northwest corner of Iowa, will be in Storm Lake at the Prairie Lakes AEA from 12 to 4.30, and that is Buena Vista, Calhoun, Cherokee, Clay, Crawford, Dickinson, Emmett, Green, Hamilton, Humboldt, Ida, Kasuth, Lyon, Monona, O'Brien, Osceola, Palo Alto, Plymouth, Pocahontas, Sac, Sioux, Webster, Woodbury, and Wright counties. And so just to clarify, I sent out an invitation Monday afternoon, and the majority of those invitations got sent to the incorrect um, people with the incorrect location. So I really apologize for that. I resent, I deleted that one, and then I resent the invitations on Tuesday morning, right around 830 in the morning, with the location that should hopefully be this the shortest distance to travel for everyone um and if you can't make those locations again please reach out to me and i'll try to help you figure out which one's the next closest or available for you to attend thank you michelle and obviously we need to get this slide updated uh because it obviously is incorrect and i'm sorry to everyone about that so before the slides go out we will uh get this corrected and to make matters worse i misspoke and said the training was only three hours and i was confusing it with the state board training so no these are in fact four and a half hour trainings um so i'm sorry <laughs> we will get this right before we send it out were there any other questions that came through, Lori, that you saw? Um, not that I've been able to see, you know. Okay. Um, all right. I know we've gone over. Thank you for staying with us. Um, as Michelle said earlier, there, there is her contact information, her email address. Um, you can contact her. You can also contact your IWD contact person, Michael, Rene, or Linda. Um, you can also send questions to this general WIOA governance at iwd.iowa.gov box. Um, Want to make sure that you have multiple ways to get information. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you for joining us. I know this was a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, and as we said, I know, you know, change is, isn't easy. And so we're going to keep working with you over the next few months and ongoing. Um, and we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, Lori or Michelle, Stacy, does anybody else want to say anything before we wrap up? No, ma'am. I'm good. I would just say thank you all for the interaction and I know there were a lot of questions that we maybe didn't specifically answer so I've captured all of those and um, when we get the recording back we will send out the recording the slide deck um, I'm going to include the map so that we make sure we're all talking about the right um, regions with the right counties and um, I think that's it so thank you all for your participation all right thank you have a great rest of your day thanks